Hello YouTube, this is JP and in this video we will be making an unboxing and a review of the Q Plus Android TV box that I bought from Lazada. So stay tuned here and just playing around. The latest technological innovations are making more and more of our traditional home equipments and appliances into smart devices. However, there are still people out there like me who are just not ready yet to upgrade or replace them with smart TVs. And that's where an Android TV box is a more practical solution. So I have an old TV set which is a Sony Bravia 3 and our movie nights would involve me browsing through my old laptop while it's connected to the TV via VGA connection and a 1.8 to 1.8 audio cable. That can be tiring setting everything up every time and that's when we finally decided to get an Android TV box. So we tried to look for the most affordable price with a decent hardware specification and that's when we found this Q Plus Android TV box for only 2,000 pesos. Yes! And boom, what do we have here? Right away, we see the Q Plus TV box console, if you call it that way. the pad. And that's it. Okay, let's set that aside for now. Let's see what else comes with this. Okay, this is the power adapter. A remote. And an HDMI cable also has this manual. I think it's easy enough that we don't need this manual to figure out how to set up this amazing box. It has 4 gigabytes of RAM with 32 gigabytes of storage space and it has Android 9.0. It has a full-size SD card port where you can put in an SD card then you have the HDMI connection two USB ports I guess one is a USB 2.0 connection and the other one is a USB 3 connection then you have an AV connection I suppose this would be for an audio video cable that goes to an RCA connection on the other end uh, we have an optical or SPDIF connection a LAN port if you'd like to hook it up to the internet via a LAN cable and of course this is where the uh, power cable comes in. So let's try it on our TV. So we now have our TV box set up there on the left side. That's our TV plus in there. So we hooked it up via the HDMI 2 connection of our TV. Let's talk about the remote. Um, so you have a power button here, then you have maybe a shortcut to the app drawer. Volume keys here, a home key, a back key, up, down, left, right, and an OK key. I suppose this is a menu. And a mouse button, hmm, interesting. Okay, and then we have some numeric keypads in here. But uh, there's a group portion here I suppose this is something that we can use to also control the TV. Right now it's not working but that's easy. We can program that. Sorry for my autofocus. I don't have a locking focus in my phone right now. And uh, we're gonna turn it on now. Okay. Right away, we see the home screen of this TV. Okay, now let's take a look at this remote. I guess this up, down, left, right controls it and then OK makes a selection. Let's try it. Yeah, it does. Okay, so right now we have the home screen showing us a video. And we got pre-installed apps like Netflix, KD Player, IMDB, YouTube is there. Wow, Amazon Prime Video. And I guess you can add more apps to it. There's the back key on the remote. Then you have the apps, which is the app drawer. 
and this is where we'll see all the pre-installed apps and there's a play store so we can install additional apps that we may want to access in our TV box value here um, go back we have a browser a file browser music so we have a music app and a KD player as well settings app we got a memory booster and then we have some customizable um, app shortcuts here in the home screen so what we want to do right away is to have it set up uh, access our internet so I would suppose we go to settings okay then, okay, then we see our network Mm, an on-screen keyboard comes up. I'm guessing that this can be a pain trying to type or search via the on-screen keyboard using this remote control. Oh, no. So let me try to see if our regular keyboard will work here. Let's check it out, yo. Okay, our mouse is activated. Let's see. I don't see. It. Okay, I don't see. It. Okay. There's our pointer, but it's not moving. It's not moving. Oh, I see. Okay. It was because I was trying to use the mouse on a glass table. So now that I'm using it on the carpet, okay, the mouse works and I think that can somehow address my issue with typing using this remote. Let's try to do a search. Okay, okay. So this one's better. Let's check out if our old keyboard we use from our desktop would work with this one, all right? Okay. It's not doing anything. Okay. The arrow keys in the keyboard work. Yo. But for some reason, the typing does not. Let's try another app, shall we? Okay, where's my brows? Okay, there you go. All right, the keyboard works. The keyboard works, guys. So yeah, we don't even need to wait for our wireless keyboard to come in, but I, I suppose that would still be handy, you know, instead of having this. Okay, great. So right away, we wanna set this up uh, by going to settings and we'll try to connect this to the internet now uh, yeah so we just key in our network password and we are connected now there's a home button on the remote so that allows us to go back to home i suppose yes it does okay and there's like a shortcut setting on the home screen that leads to this overlay settings um, side panel as compared to the one that we accessed by the app drawer earlier. Um, this is where we can put our uh, Google account or Gmail account uh, to use for accessing the Play Store. So we'll set that up now. My autofocus is really just not working right now okay okay now that our gmail account is set up let's check out the play store and 
yeah, it is the same Play Store that we have on our other Android devices, especially our mobile phone. So we can download additional apps if we want. But then again, uh, not all apps may be optimized for TV boxes, um, especially that you will have to use this, not unless you already have your wireless remote. Something's wrong with our resolution here. I don't think it fits the TV resolution quite nicely. Uh, I'm not sure if there could be any setting here that we could tweak. Device preferences. Hmm. I'm not sure. Screen percent. Oh, okay. So that should solve it. Yeah. Yeah, just enough. There you go. Yep, just perfect. So that's how you use that, guys. So maybe there's a lot of tweaking that is needed. And we just have to demonstrate at least watching a video, right? Um, let's try to do a search. HD video. HD video. Well, my TV is not 4K, so I don't think it would make any difference. But, you know, we at least have to try. Let's try this. Guys, I like it, you know, uh, it's acceptable for me. It's really clear. I'm not sure how it registers in the video, but it is really clear. The sound is good as well. So what do you think of this TV box, guys? Do you think it's good enough for its price? Let me know in the comments below. Now, my personal take on this TV box is that for its price range, the performance and the quality is good enough for me. The specifications is also acceptable. The only comment I have is using the remote for typing or searching using the on-screen keyboard can be painful. Good thing that our ordinary keyboard and mouse that we use with our PC works here. I also ordered this i8 mini wireless keyboard that I sh can use with this. So I guess we'll see how it goes when it comes here. I'll probably make another video review of that when it comes. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that you will be notified when I post that new video. So it has been another practical learning experience with you guys. Once again, this is JP and thank you for watching Just Playing Around. See ya.